Hi guys, this is Peugeot 307 SW from 2005 and today we're going to replace front brake disc. And you always replace two, if you replace one, that's a rule. Uh, of course I encourage you to follow it. And in addition we're going to replace the brake pads uh, on both sides. Well, I'm going to show you one of them, so in this case the right one, uh, because it's the same for both. So let's go ahead and start. First of all, we need to engage the handbrake, jack up the car and remove the wheel. I don't want to bore you too much, so I'll just speed it up and let's go to the next step. Now that the wheel is removed and the car is properly secured, we need to remove braking caliper, which is this one. And to do that, we need to remove this bolt and this bolt. And also remember that braking caliper has quite short hose with hydraulic fluid and we don't want to pull it too much so we need to have some boxes or something to support it on when we remove it. Let's start from the top one, it's number 13. Okay, this one is loose and then the bottom one Maybe not the most professional way, but, well, if it works. <sighs> okay. Oh. Two of them can now be removed. There are the bolts. Now, and we can remove the caliper. And there it is. Okay, now we can also take away the old brake pads. Oh. One off. the second one off and then we want to remove this yes one out Second one out, and then two on the bottom. Some nice brake pads should have these plates included. I'm not sure if mine or the one that I bought have. Okay, so I need to preserve the old one just in case. Another thing that prevents us to take off the brake disc is this element which holds the brake pad or the caliper in place. So to remove it, if you look from the other side, there's one bolt here. I'm not sure if you see this. It's this one. And the second one is here. Yeah. Okay, so now you see it. One second. Okay, I got some bigger arm. Not sure if that helped a lot, maybe a bit. So let's come back to the first option and see whether it moved. Okay, finally.
And there it is. Okay, I think I found a good position. Okay, that moved, and that means that it should go fine now. Just need to change the tool. Now that we have removed this part, we have good access to remove the disc. And I have cleaned that recently, you can't see that much. <laughs> I promise I did. But usually what you want to do is, before you reinstall the new pads, you want to clean these surfaces. And these surfaces. The ones that come in contact with this small metal uh, sheets uh, because, well, you want as much uh, smooth movement of the pads which then work here. You see they slide on it. So when this is in place, they slide on the uh, on this element so you want to also clean this if uh, this uh, small metal sheets because well the smoother it is the better the movement of the brake pads okay coming back to the front to remove the brake disc what you need to do is remove these two bolts and they are star shaped so I have a proper tool and you shouldn't need much force to do that. <clears throat> One is out. And the second one. Okay, this one is a bit worn. I really hope I can get it out. Okay, it went fine. Great. Now I can just use this one and remove it. Okay, the second one is out. And now we can remove the disc from the car. Now, since we are here, we can clean the interface part with alcohol. Okay, now if we compare the old braking disc now, we bypass the rusty edge. It shows that it has 24 point four millimeters and of course that might vary a bit twenty four point five twenty four four point four so it it's got twenty four and half millimeter and now if I look at the new one of course as I always say don't look at the brand. I don't know whether this is good or bad. This is what I bought. I don't recommend it. I'm not saying it's bad. So, this is the new one. And if we now measure the new one, it has 26, 
exactly 26 millimeters. So I checked with my car with the uh, specification and I should use 26 millimeters uh, brake discs. Uh, and the rule, well, usually it's written by the manufacturer, so you should uh, look in the, on the website, either call them or if you get a, a piece of paper with the specification on it, then you probably find it there. I didn't get anything, as you see, apart from the... Oh, yeah, well, I got something. Let me look there. Okay, I read it. It's uh, just a manual on how to uh, install the new ones and remove the old ones. The other way around, of course. Uh, they don't say anything about the thickness, but I checked and majority of them has two millimeters capacity. So basically, if that is 26 millimeters, then you can use it as long as it goes down to 24. And as I say, this is majority of what I found online. Uh, you just make sure that the ones you use have the same uh, requirement. So when I have 24 and a half, I could go still 0 0.5, 0 0.4 millimeters on this ones. But the braking pads are pretty worn out and I decided to just replace all. So if you see, that's the old brake pad. If we have a look at the new one. There is a difference, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so now we're ready to install the new braking disc in place. Uh, what they say here also is that if the disc is supplied with something called DSP, which is Disc Surface Protection, and in my case it is, uh, you don't need to clean it. Uh, if it's not, then, you, then it's recommended. So I'm not cleaning it, but you uh, you need to check with your uh, manual or instruction. So now you put it in place. Okay, now we install the bolts back. Yes, and then tighten it. Okay, um, that might be boring for you because you already know what I'm going to do. It's basically the reverse of uh, removal. So I will speed it up for you. And of course, clean the surfaces before you reinstall that part back. There are the surfaces. Yeah, and as I said, here. Okay, when done, check that the disc spins freely. And now we need to work with the caliper. You see that the piston is extended from the basic uh, position. So we need to push it back. You can normally do that having standard tools. Uh, takes a bit more time but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 
a cool new tool that I bought especially for pulling this back and we'll see how it works. Okay, so that's how the tool looks like. And if I now take this and put that through here, I guess. It's the first time I'm using it, so you know, give me some time. Uh, then I guess what you do is you put it here. and push it. And as you see, it's a bit, a bit too little, so you need a proper um, disc to be put here. Uh, let's see if this one fits. Uh, that maybe is a bit too big. What about this one? Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so we put this here together with the disc. We'll try to have it in correct place. Okay. Okay, now I have something proper. So I guess what we do is we just turn this one. Yes, and it goes much easier as well. I hope you see that the piston is retracting. Well, that's the instruction, guys. It's many languages, so that's why it's so big. But basically, what they say is that you should watch out when you install it and drive carefully and uh, follow the guides of the manufacturer of the car. They say that you should install them like that and not like that so the one that have the friction material on should be towards the disc and basically read it and uh, be according to the instruction do everything according to the instruction of course okay so now what we need to do is we need to install our uh, metal sheets interfaces for the brake pads on the surface that is clean. Okay, so this is done. Now This is done. And what they say that if this is too dirty and if this doesn't provide a good sliding surface, then you need to replace that. So think about it. And perhaps when you're buying pads, buy the ones that have this element included. Okay. And the last one. Okay, so that's done. And now we need to install the pads. So you take the two that when you made them, they have the same shape. And you put one here and the second one here. And you want to make sure that they can freely move. I'm not sure if you see that. Basically what you want to make sure is that they have free movement here and it's and that it's easy to to move them like that. Oh this one went out of its place. Okay. 
I don't have a good grip there, but they do have movement. Okay, it doesn't fit, so I need to pull, push the piston more inside. Finally! So here you also have from both sides the pins that mount this caliper to the support and you need to push it back to make space for the caliper and play with it a bit. Okay, is it in place? Yes. Nice. Okay, we did it. Okay, very good. Now we need to mount the uh, mount this uh, two bolts, the same as we have removed at the beginning. Okay, now we put the small bolts there. We need to maneuver the caliper a bit. Okay, the caliper sits very good, and now we can put on the wheel. Okay guys, now that we have mounted everything back and the car is on the ground, we can start it up and press the brake pedal a few times until the travel of the brake pedal would be approximately one third of overall possible travel and that's to make sure that the piston in the brake caliper is extended to the length that the brake pads touches the brake disc so you're safe to brake and of course take it easy at the beginning first few brakes you need to watch out so you don't burn your uh, brake pads or <laughs> don't hit anything so the first few brakes might have a bit worse braking capacity but you just need to uh, take it easy and and after some time it will start braking normally and just at the end make sure to check the braking fluid level uh, after you have done the replacement just to make sure that everything is fine if there's too little braking fluid add the proper braking fluid in my case this is dot 4 fluid I hope you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did and if you'd like to see more Peugeot 307 mechanics check my channel out, I've got plenty of videos about this car and good luck with your Peugeot!